Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, that's for art. And I have been thinking about something that's been on my mind for the last few days. Um, yesterday on, or maybe it was today, I think it was yesterday, I saw a post by Myron McDonald on Facebook about, um, don't tell me what I think. And I mean, it was an awesome little blurb about how she's up to here with people telling her what to think and who's right and who's wrong. And she has a right to believe that Soros has a horrible hand in our country. And whether you disagree with her or not, she's right. She has a right to believe exactly what she believes. Just like you believe what you believe, I believe what I believe. We each have a right to walk our own path on this planet. And Thomas Ackerman talks about this all the time, about how we have an obligation to act our conscience. Um, and he did a video today about um, acting on our conscience and being our real selves. But most of us realize that we, when we come into this planet, I mean, when I had my children, I had the idea that children are born perfect. And my goal was to keep my stuff out of their lives, which, frankly, as a parent is impossible. <laughs> I mean, shit happens. My ex-husband threw us out when my child was born. You think that didn't affect us? Yes, it did. <laughs> Big time. My shit affected them. Boom, immediately, as soon as my second child was born. So, I coped with it the best I could. We've grown up. They've grown up. Uh, you know, I did the best I could as a single mother. I made lots of mistakes with my own stuff, but all of it generated from one thing. I did not love myself. I did not love myself even in Eansi, to be honest. Like, I really thought that I did not have a right to live. And the only reason that I had the right to live was because I was a mother, and that was what my obligation was. It took me many years to get beyond that thinking, and in the meantime, we all grew up, right? So... The reason I share these parts of the story with everyone and people that I don't even know, like I'm talking to a group of people who I probably will never meet, and, you know, like, which is okay with me because I believe in the community of all of us. And it's, and I think people are hungry, hungry, hungry for a sense of community we're hungry for a sense of well-being, a sense of stability, because the one thing that drives us here is this. When scientists lie, people die. These motherfuckers have lied to us for 70 years about nuclear, and we, our planet is now dying. The Pacific Ocean is having catastrophic events, which if you notice with these, quote, climate changers, they never mention Fukushima. Never Never, never. They never say Fukushima is out of control. Sellafield is out of control. Chernobyl is out of control. I mean, they never. And have we ever heard about those nuclear power plants that supposedly got bombed in the, in the Ukraine a couple years ago? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Lock it up and throw it away. Let's don't talk about the worst genocide that has ever happened on the planet caused entirely by the war profiteers. So this is my point here. We don't need to call each other names. You don't need to get all pissed off about Chris Busby fucking peddling it softly. Because we're already fucking past beyond fixing it. There's no fixing. There's no fixing Fukushima, folks. There's no fixing it. There's no decommissioning. There's no stopping it. There's no... The only thing that's going to stop it is if we have a gigantic earthquake and it buries the whole goddamn thing and it goes under. Or maybe Mount Fuji blows up and the whole island collapses. That might save our planet. But we don't know. And that is the life that we have agreed to live on. I, I, My own personal belief is I don't believe in religions. I do believe, however, in spirit, in connectivity. I think we're all part of everything and everyone else. Like, I don't believe that any of us are separated from each other. And the anger and the hostility comes from the sense of separation. We live in a culture where people have been brainwashed into believing they're better than the other. It's otherness that is driving us apart. 
When we recognize that there is no other, that we're all one, we can get along. We choose to get along. I mean, humans are frail creatures. We're a very interesting little species because, um, you know, you look at like a dog. If you ever have a dog or a cat, like they live their own little world. They pretty much don't really care what you do. You know, like a dog will stay with you till it dies. A cat will leave if you stop feeding it. <laughs> Dogs won't leave if you stop feeding it. They'll starve with you. That's the interesting thing. But that goes to the point of the type of nature that each creature is. And this is what the creatures of humans are. Humans are extremely repetitive. And we need community, which is why we're desperate for community, which is why people are watching this video. And actually, as an experiment on this particular video, I'm going to monetize it for the first time. I'm going to see what happens. Uh, and mostly because we're going to now have a President Trump. <laughs> I might as well get into the money game until he tanks the economy. Um, I kind of got harassed the other day for my radio show on Friday, the interview with Carl Grossman after the election, because he and I are both, quote, progressives. We're not like uh, fiscal deniers, so to speak. That's what I call the conservatives. They're fiscal deniers. They act like... Uh, Giving money to the... We've already seen this game. We know what's going to happen. Give the money to the ultimate rich and it just tanks the economy. We already know that. That story's been done several times. But in the meantime, they're going to go for the gold in the next four years. And let's hope they don't roll back all of our liberties trying to deport two million people. Uh, I don't think they'll be able to because the world's a different place than it was during World War II. Uh, they can't just start evicting people. Neighbors are not going to let that happen. So, and in that case, they might get what they want, total civil war, because we're all armed. And uh, I hope not. I hope that we rise to the occasion. And, uh, I mean, honestly, my look to the future is bleak, except for the fact that I know, I know it, in here, the thing that well springs out of all of us, if we believe in the greater good, if we believe in each other, if we believe in ourselves, it's about self-love. And it's not like narcissistic self-love where you feel insecure that you say, oh, yeah, I love myself. No, I'm talking about the kind of self-love where you're willing to give yourself, to open up, to give of yourself. Um Thomas Ackerman just had a video today where he was highlighting some woman who was saying that Reiki healing is bad, uh, witchcraft is bad, religions are bad, like every aspect of what humans have done throughout the history of humanity is all bad, 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 bad. And it's all away from the natural law. Well, I personally find that so offensive <laughs> because... Well, frankly, because I have just natural tendencies in my own life. Like when my, ch I didn't realize I was doing Reiki healing on my children, but I did do it. Uh, I didn't even know what that was when I did it. I know that when my children were sick, we were too poor for us to go to the doctor. So when they were sick, I'd lay my hands over their head and say, just concentrate on giving me all of your sickness, all of your illness. And I would like run my hand about six inches over their body like this and over the top of their head. And I could feel it and I could, they got better the next day, folks. I don't know how that worked, but it just happened. 10, 15 years later, when I went to go get healing for my really severe arthritis when I was seven, 37 years old, um, Dr. Bob Heron did some energy healing on me. I started getting really well, and we started talking about my girls and how uh, I just basically told them, oh, yeah, I did that with my kids. And it was really out of desperation, but these are gifts that we are given when we come into life. So Denying the natural gifts that we have is not against natural law because these are natural gifts that we have given. The Western philosophy of we have to look to something else outside of ourselves goes against natural law. 
But we are gifted and we're part of the universe. And I don't know how long we're going to be part of the universe, frankly, post Fukushima. It doesn't look like we're going to be here long. The, the American government and the Western way of uh, destroying the planet pretty much has put in, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what you call it, but it's, in, you know, dug a dagger right into the heart of the planet. The planet will survive. Will humanity? That's the question. Will humanity survive what we have done to ourselves? I say yes. I say yes. I say there are going to be some people, a few people who will survive. And that survival is going to come because they totally live in harmony with the universe and with themselves. They love themselves. They will love themselves enough to be able to find a way through the ensuing calamity, which we have not even seen begin yet. The one good thing about Trump being elected is that after four years of having a Trump administration, I think America will be sick of him, hopes to God, because the destruction they're going to do isn't really going to hit the fan until year three. So they might be able to pal on. I mean, this is the stunning thing. Bush Jr. had to steal the election. How much more dumbing down of America do we need to have when the Americans, I mean, I get it. I, the option is, do you want Hillary Clinton and her whole horrible cabal of horrible people or this whole new thing, which people are going to be stunned. They are not upsetting the apple cart, folks. They are not going to be turning away from the status quo. All of Trump's new advisors are all lobbyists. They're all from major corporations. Yeah, he might shut down the EPA, but he'll create another entity. If they're not doing jack shit for us. Governments are not functioning because the ultra wealth still controls the game. Okay, they can control the game. They can't control us. They can't make us hate ourselves unless we choose to. They can't make us hate our neighbors unless we decide it's okay. There is no reason my daughter should have been verbally assaulted by a guy in a red hat. Or no reason her friend should have gotten the shit kicked out of her just being a gay person. Or no reason another set of neighbors who were a gay couple had a note on their door saying, Your kind isn't wanted here anymore. The foment and hate of the racists and bigots that stood behind Trump that have been sitting in the closet that now feel like they have the right to come out is a mental illness that we need to get over as a human species. And unless we talk, that's why in my last two videos, I mean, Tom was talking about the sex ring at the beginning of the Kevin Annette thing, which I don't know about Kevin Annette and what he's done. But I do know my own history. I do know what happened in our lives. And I do know societies. And I do know that every institution when I was growing up failed us. They failed my nieces and my nephews. The only reason my kids were okay is I kept them the fuck away from my family for 20 years. Because the system fails us. The system uses women and children. We're all being used as assets on a balance sheet. The only way to break that whole cycle is to love yourself. Really love yourself. And when you love yourself, you will not be angry at other people, even if you disagree with them. You can maintain a sense of well-being, even if it sounds like, you know, chalk on a chalkboard, two fingers on a chalkboard, I guess you call it. It's really imperative, folks, that we decide that if we do not love ourselves, acknowledge it and work on it every single day. Every time you hear yourself saying a negative thought about yourself, reverse the thought. Every time you hear yourself saying a negative thought about someone else, reverse the thought. Figure out a way to constantly generate loving, open, healing, free thought of love and true emotions of acceptance.
I'm grateful that Marud made that post because she's right. She has a right to say and believe anything that she wants. You know, Marud lives in Scotland. She's got. She's not even part of the United States. She doesn't really. I don't think she's ever really been here. I don't think she's gotten the full flavor of the Trumpsters, the fear that is going on in America among people of color in the queer community. It's real. And it's real because the KKK hats have come out and people are getting assaulted and harassed. And when Trump gets inaugurated, I guarantee you it's going to skyrocket unless he says something. I mean, I've been tweeting Donald Trump. Please come out and speak to the people that are afraid of you because that's what it is. People are afraid. The protests are spontaneous. Yeah, they might be paying some people to come out and protest, but even those people, they probably want to come out and protest. So fuck yeah. Would you take $18 an hour to protest against Donald Trump? I would. I mean, I protest for free, but if you're going to pay me, please do. Like for fuck's sake. Like, this is the ridiculousness of it all. People are angry. Oh, it's a setup, blah, blah, blah. Really? No. It's really important for us to love each other and to love ourselves. Love comes within. It's okay for us to have these emotions and be all mixed up about it. But the fact is... We're one little tiny creature. We're just like the dolphins, the whales. I mean, there's more spiders on the planet than there are human beings. More ants. There's a lot more creatures than there are human beings. It's not our planet. We share the planet. So I guess I'll end here. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Tom Ackerman and tell you, I think, you know, the idea of constantly pushing people to act on their conscience is a good idea, except that people don't know what their conscience is until they love themselves. Because when you don't love yourself, you're constantly thinking, oh, did I think that right? Or am I constantly right? And you don't even hear your conscience sometimes. You just respond, respond, respond. It's like Pavlov's dog. You don't even know what's what. The first message has to be, be kind to yourself. Love yourself as if you were your only parent that you ever had. Treat yourself with kindness and love. Constantly remember to love yourself. Constantly. So, ciao you guys. And let's remember, let's keep our eye on the ball. When scientists lie, people die. Those are the people who we need to get to start to listen to their conscience. Not the ones right here. Although we could... Probably be a little bit kinder to each other, which I hope this message endures. So, ciao, you guys. Put your courage feet on. Bye.